So let's conclude this conference with the last talk. We have Tomasz Golinski. He will talk about restricted Presnanian and integrable systems around it. And you have until 20 to 6. Okay, thank you. So I'm going to speak about some integrable systems that can be associated in some way to restricted Presnanian there. Uh, one of those is the well-known KDP equation, and the other ones mostly going to concentrate on. Yes, it is too far. Too far? How is weather? Too far. Too far. Okay. Say something. Is it better? No. Is it too far? Okay. No, sorry. I think you. Okay. No, no, Okay, so the restricted Grassmannian is one of the examples of uh, non trivial Banach manifold. Uh, so during my talk, I will only stay in a Banach setting, I will not go to any more uh, difficult things. Uh, so the, this Grassmannian appeared uh, in connection with the KDV equation. Uh, so these are the, the main papers when, when it very happened. Uh, I'll shortly say what, what was the construction. And it has also many other applications in mathematics and physics. For example, it's related to loop groups. You heard about them, I think, on uh, one of the lectures. Uh, of course, the differential equation also the physical problem of uh, second quantization it describes uh, equivalence of uh, genus states of second quantization. Uh, okay, and there's a, another branch of my talk will be related to Hamiltonian mechanics in balance spaces. We already, during Daniel's talk, we heard a lot about it. There is this paper uh, by Pablo Bona, uh, who constructed the, realized the Schrodinger equation, or Heisenberg equation, on predictable to L infinity. And there are those, uh, the other papers which deal with this problem, uh, by Oji Chandratu and uh, uh, which introduces the concept of uh, Banach in Poisson spaces and several other papers which deal with the subject. Okay, so I will start with the restricted class one and define shortly what it is uh, so you can know what's the situation there. Then I will short, shortly say something about the classical uh, situation related to restricted class one and so how. How it relates to the KDB and other hierarchies of integral systems. And then I, I will recall the definition of Banach in Poisson spaces, but it was already done by Daniel, so it's, um, we only try to remind the main parts. Then I will go to the part when we construct some particular Banach in Poisson spaces, which are related to the restricted Tasmania and how we created some integrable systems. Uh, on on those spaces, and given time, I'll go back to the finite dimensional uh, situation and see what happens there. But I probably won't uh, do it because it's too technical, and you're already very tired after the whole week of listening to talks. Okay, so restricted best mine. To send, we need a, a Hilbert space, and we need to fix uh, polarization. And so it just means the, the composition of it into two orthogonal parts. Uh, it, the, it's related, for example, in physics with the so-called uh, Fermi C, it's the state when all uh, possible particles of one type are present and none of the particles of the other type are uh, present. So for example, matter and matter, things like that. So, uh, P plus and P minus with projection on those components. And the restricted Grassmannian is a set of all subspaces, uh, Hilbert subspaces in H, such that when we project the restricted projection onto, onto H plus to, to the subspace, we, what we get is a Prenton operator. And the restriction to P, of P minus is Hilbert Schmitt. So, in some sense, if somebody is not really familiar with the uh, theory of operator algebra, so these operators are considered to be 
making some sense. They are defined as an operate, operators which are invertible up to the compact operator. So almost invertible. So the kernel is, for example, finite dimensional, and the uh, uh, image is a uh, finite dimensional co uh, complement. And Hilbert Schmidt operator are those that uh, you can square root it under trace is finite. Uh, all those details. I think Daniel was talking about it as well. So it turns out that this restricted Grassmannian is a Banach uh, symplectic manifold or even more Hilbert uh, manifold. I'm not going to give the detail of the symplectic form here. It's it's not, not that difficult that some of the formulas will be there, but I'm not going to uh, use it, use this structure because my integrable systems is not on the Grassmannian itself. And in order to, to create the structure of the manifold on this uh, Grassmannian, not this button, okay, uh, we do mostly what Aneta did, but what she did was. Uh, Maybe it was not the easiest way to follow in this, this simple case of and uh, the, the idea is that if we consider an operator between h plus and h minus and consider its graph, that its graph is the subspace of the whole Hilbert space. And if we choose this operator to be Hilbert Schmidt operator, then the graph is automatically in the grass mine. And it turns out that by uh, Changing somewhat those spaces here, we can obtain a, another map and they form a, uh, an atlas on, on the restricted Tasmanian. And transition maps are homographies, so they are smooth. So that's the, uh, that's the construction. So the same was uh, done by Aneta, but it was uh, probably in order to have all those groupoid structures, it was uh, wanted to consider other components also, so it was not uh, that, that simple as it was here. Okay, it is uh, the, this manifold is not connected. The connected components are indexed by a uh, threshold index of an operator, uh, this P plus uh, restricted to W. The threshold index is just the difference of the dimensions of kernel and co kernel, uh, which I told you already is uh, finite. So, one of the classic theorems is that in this, this index uh, numbers those connected components. Uh, yeah, you should say that h plus and h minus are infinite dimensions. Yes, they usually she, are. But, I mean, uh, setting, she, she was considering all possible perspectives at the same time. So here you specify one. I'm not, no, I was not considering all Grassmannians. She was considering full Grassmannian, which was one Grassmannian of all possible subspaces. Yes, okay. So, here uh, you restrict to one specific. Yes, it's, it's a subset of the Grassmannian that I was talking yeah. about, but it's, I don't, it's probably not so manifold in any case uh, in the full Grassmannian because there's different differential structure, different topology. Uh, but I don't have to assume that they are three dimensional. If, I, if they are, the situation is trivial, but one can consider the situation when only one of those components is finite dimensional. And I will maybe give some example, maybe not, not an example showing what formulas one can get in that case. But yes, to have the, the, the canonical restricted Tasmanian one would have uh, both uh, components being infinite dimensional. Uh, okay, so in order to write down some formulas, one usually you use block decomposition. Since we have an operator from H to H, we can decompose it into a matrix form or blocks uh, map different of those components to, to, to themselves. Okay, so the, uh, maybe it's not the best notation now, I think the indices should be read from the left to right. But, and so when it Opposite direction when you write that. Okay, so in order to uh, work with uh, this Grassmannian one, usually also considers its structural groups. And uh, the main group is GL restricted group, which is defined as all invertible operators on a Hilbert space such that uh, 
the blocks on a diag of the diagonal of the of the uh, of this element are Hilbert Schmidt, and those should be fretful. But, but the condition that they are fretful is automatic for the fact that the operator is invertible. Uh, it's Lie algebra is easy to see. It's the same thing because from the invertibility condition, and when you look at it, it's uh, easy to see that you can introduce the norm like that. So you can take the normal of each of the blocks separately and add them up. One of in two blocks you take uh, operator norm, in the other blocks you take L2 norm, and it makes uh, GLR, uh, sorry, L, LR into Banaki algebra. And if you uh, do everything, this becomes a Banaki group model on, on this Banaki algebra. Uh, okay, I said that. Uh, from this whole setting, it follows also that this group is disconnected, and likewise, the components are number, enumerated by a threshold index of an operator G. Uh, already, uh, I know that Barbara was going to ask about the real part, so I have you can consider unitary group, uh, unitary restricted group, uh, and uh, you know, it's also Banachi group in a real sense. And the restricted Grassmannian is a homogeneous space uh, with respect to the action of those groups. Uh, and can be these formulas to make sense. You can choose H plus and just move it around with those groups. And if you want to have uh, connected components, you, you just use connected components of the groups. Or alternatively, you can take unitary restricted and divide it by uh, full unitary groups on H plus and H minus. So in order to get the Kittiv equation, one needs to have more com concrete realization of all this business. So uh, and it's con concrete Hilbert space. Uh, one usually takes the complex uh, square integrable functions on a unit circle, and there is a natural polarization. You take the function that uh, can be extended holomorphically into the center of the disk or into the outside of the disk. So in a more Easy way they are span by positive and negative powers of Z. So we have uh, this Hilbert space. And it can be also shown that if you take a function of uh, on a circle which is twice differentiable, then uh, multiplication by the function is an operator from GL restricted group. And when the soon sum group, which is open, uh, Generated by functions of this form is usually you know, by gamma, uh, has also two components related to this uh, part. Okay, so it's only, I want to give you the idea, not all, all the details. So now, Kurt is the risk equation, probably the most popular integrable system. Uh, it can be this idea of. Uh, Application of Grassmannian here is that the solution of KDVR flows on some part of the restricted Grassmannian, not, not, not from every point. There are some that needs to consider some subset. But again, the, those are the details I will skip. So, to do it, one usually considers the last pair for the restricted Grassmannian. Uh, and consider the whole hierarchy of uh, KDV. Is that instead of one equation, one consider different times here. So the operator P is uh, replaced by positive part of the square root of operator L to the power K plus some coefficients. Uh, and for K equal to one, the, the trivial situation just a translation. For K equal to two, uh, two, three, we get KDV equation. Even K is an not interesting because uh, such the power, positive power, is, and there is no need to truncate the pseudo differential operator and it commutes, so it's, it's trivial. But the, the flows, in any case, commute for uh, all k's. Okay, it's, it's the most simple case, but there are many generalizations. One can obtain some generalized uh, KDV hierarchy by replacing pk by. Uh, something like that. One can get also uh, 
uh, and KP hierarchy by taking different operators there. But I don't, it's again also. So when we consider such a function on, on the Hilbert space of uh, on the function of the disk, we uh, take some time, so multiply by the, that was to the case, some other computer exponent. Uh, when we assume that almost all t's are zero, of course, it could be uh, safe. It turns out that this function is an element of, of the group I was speaking before, this gamma plus. And the, the, uh, the idea is that if we start from some element of the Grassmannian W and apply this flow, this function of the or operator of multiplication by G to E, it's, uh, it should uh, realize the flow of the uh, KDV by, by those times. The one, one only thing now is missing how to uh, find this function you done to and relate it with, with an element of the Grassmannian. It's not, not very straightforward, but there are formulas how to compute it. You need to define a determinant of an operator in the proper sense. And what then one gets some first known as a tau function, uh, which is related to UW in this way. Okay, so now I uh, enter the main uh, part of my talk. So I'm, or maybe introduction to the main part of my talk. So I'm going to recall the Banach uh, on spaces. And I want to do also some short digression here about. What is the definition of Poisson manifolds? Because uh, it's, it's not as trivial as it seems, even in a bala setting. It's not enough to say that we have a Poisson bracket with some property. One needs to be a bit more careful. For example, one needs to say you have a smooth manifold model on a balanced space, and you need to assume that the bracket is both localizable that, and that it is given by the Poisson. Tense. Uh, and the second, the third thing we need to assume is that if we consider the sharp mass, which in a natural way is the mass of the cotangent bundle to double dual of the tangent bundle, uh, it's not good enough because the double dual is not, not uh, good for considering flows. So one needs uh, this sharp mass to take values. In fact, in a tangent bundle. So that's, that's an additional assumption one needs to put on a Poisson structure on a Banach manifold. So the first thing is the assumption of localizability is uh, new compared to the finite dimensional case because, uh, in general, there are no bump function on the Banach spaces. We heard it uh, in some con other context uh, during this week that you know, there are some Banach spaces where there are no functions with a bounded support. And it's a very typical situation uh, in two spaces. So, so it's impossible to apply Poisson bracket to locally defined function. But when one is working, it's usually what people are doing all the time. You take some locally defined function, you want to have a local solution, and things like that. So without assuming locality of the bracket, uh, you couldn't do it. But the weak point of what I'm saying is that I never saw an example of a Poisson bracket in a Banach manifold, which would not be Banach. I don't know if it's possible, maybe somebody who knows. There are, of course, some non local brackets, but in more general sense, less formal sense. Uh, but uh, I, I don't know if they are possible to be written down in a Banach context. And another thing is that. One usually thinks that if you write down the Poisson bracket and write down the Leibniz rule, it should follow that uh, the bracket is given by some Poisson tensor. It is not uh, so in infinite dimension, it follows from uh, it, the reason can be found in the Michal Kriegel book, for example, on uh, convenient uh, analysis. It, the situation is that the Lee, Leibniz identity only implies that the uh, Poisson bracket is given by derivation. So it's something that is called operational vector field, for example, which are not the same as the element of the tangent bundle. So for that reason, uh, one needs to specifically 
assume that the Poisson tensor of this form exists and that the Poisson bracket is given like that. Uh, taking the examples that can be found in the Michael Krigel book, one can easily construct the Poisson bracket uh, in the classical sense uh, on uh, the parallel setting that would not be uh, given by Poisson tensor. So these are called uh, sometimes queer uh, Poisson brackets, or since they come from uh, queer vector fields. And their existence is not very special. They can be even uh, written down on a Hilbert space in a Pesco's rule setting when one would think. Another point that it's not necessarily very easy, but still also I don't have a counterexample, is the problem of uniqueness of this Poisson tensor. Because, uh, as long as if we wouldn't have the localizability, one is not certain that uh, globally defined function on a manifold would their differential would span the whole cotangent bundle. I, I never saw a proof that, that it is so. I don't know, maybe maybe it's so, but again, without bound function, you cannot prove it. You cannot take uh, locally defined functions uh, using define them in chart uh, and put them back. So you, you don't have bound function. Uh, of course, on a, when you have a trivial manifold like an open subset in a balanced space, you can always use linear function. But for a more complicated manifold, I don't know if somebody knows this. Um, uh, okay, so like I said, the oh, okay, all right, button. Uh, this pathological Boston brackets exist uh, on LP space, for example, when P is smaller or equal to two. And then, uh, so those two points come from uh, our paper with uh, Daniel Bellitita and Barbara. And the third condition uh, with this sharp map comes from the original paper by uh, Ogilvic and Ratio. And it ensures that Hamiltonian vector fields we consider are really vector fields, I mean, sections of tangent bundle, not sections of these things, because then you will have a, a good flow. Maybe you have some flow in a weak sense. Uh, for some points, local, I don't know, not smooth flows. Like maybe there are some possibilities there. Okay. So, Banach was in space. So that's, that's what Daniel was uh, defining on this first lecture. It's just a Banach space uh, equipped with a structure of Banach manifold such that its dual uh, is a Banach algebra with respect uh, to the Poisson bracket. And uh, alternatively, it can be said that the Banach space is the Banach Lee Poisson space. Uh, if it's dual, it's a Banach Lee algebra with a property like that. It's possible then to use uh, the Lee algebra structure there to move, move uh, to introduce a Banach bracket on the uh, Banach space B with exactly the same formula one uses in the Lee Poisson's uh, structures uh, till the 19th century. Uh, except now the, the derivatives uh, are given, the functions are given on the pre dual space, not the dual space. So then the derivatives are in a dual, which is an algebra, and everything works fine. Hamilton equation also has the form like usual. Uh, so the model example for this one, which comes from this paper by Pablo Bona, is the trace class operators. I'm shortly repeating again what Daniel already said. It is pre-dual to offer all bounded operators on Hilbert space. And for example, if one take takes some uh, function on L1, so function H, the equation you get for uh, as a equation of motion is like this. So this is just a Heisenberg equation in, in case, I mean, if H would be a linear function, it would be a Heisenberg equation. So this is a bit more general situation. And if one would take as an uh, element row from L1, uh, L1 operator, then you get the equation of this form. And again, it's a Schrodinger equation. You get the usual form in X or I, things like that. So you probably need to consider uh, real setting. I don't want to do it now. 
Okay. So the, the integrable systems I'm going to describe live on uh, Predua spaces which are related to plus minus. So I need to take this L restricted space. Uh, uh, to recall that in the block form, it was a uh, space which had on the main diagonal operator which were bounded and on the other diagonal operator which were Hilbert Schmidt. So one can easily take Predual of each block separately. So we get the condition that operators which are on the diagonal will be L1, and those which are off the diagonal are still Hilbert Schmidt, because Hilbert Schmidt operators are Hilbert space, so they are equal to themselves. And the pairing is given by a trace, but one need to be a bit careful with the trace because uh, uh, mu times a is not in general a trace class operator, so one could have to make it a trace class, but by a combination like this. It's, when you compute, it's the same, but you have to be careful because uh, you cannot multiply it by an arbitrary element as it would uh, go out of the uh, scope of the trace and the polynomials would stop making sense. But it, it follows the normal, this restricted trace follows the normal properties of a trace if you make sure to take the operators for each it's defined. So this L1 restricted space is a Banach Poisson space. Uh, you can write down the Poisson bracket. Uh, you can write down the norm as one would expect, but it's not enough to do what I need. I need a central extension. So this is construction for this comes from uh, physics or second quantization. You can, for example, found in the book by Bruce Butler, which I will give you the reference at the start of the paper. So we. It's possible to consider an extension of uh, GL1 of H, uh, GL restricted uh, by GL1 on H plus. Uh, and then it's Lie algebra is uh, something like that, of course. Then it's not a central extension, obviously, because and it's, you're not even uh, extending it by something that is commuted. So we have to divide it afterwards by SL1 H plus. I'm not going into the details what those groups are now, but uh, only... uh, sorry, uh, Tomas, there is a question uh, online. So when one is considering this is from Pingsu, when one is considering path spaces, should one think of it as Banach manifolds or diffeological spaces? No, I mean um, Banach space, yeah. Okay, and uh, and the same for mapping spaces, everything. No, I, I don't have mapping spaces. Okay, okay. Here. I don't think so. And there was another question, which was uh, which so the this one has advantages when talking about tangent bundle and Poisson geometry over a different approach. Uh, which one do you mean? The approach to Poisson? using Banach spaces instead of geology. Yeah. Always, there are, uh, when you have stronger structure, you have more pro properties to, to, to work with it. Uh, if you can prove that something is Banach manifold, you have more, uh, more rich structure and so on. Okay, thank you. So, uh, So the central extension you get is, uh, I would be really interested in the Lie algebra. Uh, so it's just L restricted uh, times C with a certain cycle, which is known as the Schwinger term because it's related to the physics of, of uh, uh, second quantizations related to behavior of an electron in some situations. So in our case, it's just a trace of some components of uh, element satisfies the cycle property and can be used to define the bracket uh, on the central extension of L restricted algebra by C. Okay, and the, we can also write down the predual space easily since it's not very complicated with a usual pairing by trace. Look at the Adjoint and co-adjoint representation in this setting. I think I will not go into 
details of these formulas, I think, if you had time things a bit early, everybody would be gracious because it's already uh, been a long week. So this is a uh, Banach in Poisson space. I think it was first described in a uh, paper by uh, Ratio and Barbar. Correct. Yes, you're not convinced. <laughs> was that a, a true disappointment? What? Was that a and the yes, he introduces a central extension, but uh, not the predual space, uh, which is one of the person's space. Uh, but uh, I put should be predual here. One is missing. Okay, Poisson bracket is uh, has two components one is the usual bracket, and the other one is related to the Schwinger term. Uh, with some with gamma in front, and gamma is the parameter from the uh, from central extension. So this gives us since gamma is a parameter from central extension, so there is no evolution in this parameter. So it can be considered uh, just as an extra parameter in our family of Poisson brackets, and thus we obtain the whole pencil of Poisson brackets in a natural way. Uh, so I'll skip over the little counterpart unless Barbara asks me about it after the, the lecture. <laughs> so, like I said, we can, can either fix gamma and consider it afterwards as a parameter on, or put some epsilon in front of it and put a pencil on the, the bigger space, doesn't matter. Anyway, when you, you can easily compile, uh, compute the Casimir's uh, for the structure just like. Uh, usually by taking a trace of the power of an operator, but to make everything work good due to this extension, one needs to, to shift it a bit, add something, otherwise it will be infinite. But those terms is only doesn't play a very big role in the, uh, the, in the formula. The main part is just it's like a trace of A to the power K that is considered for typical uh, Poisson structures. Okay, so now we are in a place where you can use uh, Margaret method. Uh, so you just expand this canvas with respect to, to the parameters we introduced. We obtain some family of functions which are polynomials in uh, the new, which new element of bar equals on space. Uh, again, I have a lot of formulas which uh, I'm not sure you want to see them. These functions H are some trace of some. Operator combinations of, of, of mu, which are polynomials of mu, which is some proper coefficients. And due to the nature of the construction, they are automatically uh, involution. They are no longer Casimir's, uh, but, but they still commute among themselves, or we have a rich family of functions on a banana people on space which commute. So in, in finite dimension, it would be enough to say that the system is integrable. In infinite dimension, it is not. So, but still, people will do it. Maybe abuse the the nomenclature slide to it. It's not like uh, we heard in a talk yesterday that integrable systems are those who can solve what they don't look like that. We can solve some cases at least. Uh, I'm going to show you that. But we have infinite family of integral of motion for each of the equations uh, that are there. We have lots of representations, things like that. So uh, the equations which uh, we have are like that: the uh, dt gamma mu. It's uh, add acting on, on this element. So gamma is the constant because it's parameter of central extension. And here we have some commutators and projectors acting in proper way on, on, on operator mu. Uh, so you can write it down as a separate equation and they look like this. So we have derivative of mu is commutator of mu corrected by something with something related on mu. But, but that part is constant, so it can easily be written also there. The derivative of something is a commutator of the same thing with something else. One can write down how it looks in block decomposition, and it uh, turns out that the blocks which are on the diagonal are also constant. That all dynamics happens in the blocks uh, which are off diagonal. Uh, okay. 
since since we could write it as a in some way as a uh, lax pair, we know that the spectra of the operator mu and mu is plus gamma and plus are, are conserved also. So one can look at it like that. Uh, okay, I'll skip those uh, details because I, I change the functions a bit to make, make examples easier, but nobody's following the details. So, <laughs> it's yeah. skip. so I'm going to show you some lowest uh, equations in this, in this uh, hierarchy. For, the, uh, for H, K0, H, K1, one of the equations like uh, that is rather simple derivative of uh, when the block is you need to take the power of the matrix and then cut out this block. And the, for, you know, the same thing happens in the other block. And for HK1, you need to do some more complicated construction. There is a finite sum and the other uh, combination coming to play. Uh, now, now, the surprising thing happened that. We can consider uh, Grassmannian as a synthetic leaf in the real part of our Lipasan space. And if we consider homogeneous coordinates of the Grassmannian, then this equation uh, turned out to be quite easy in those coordinates. So, uh, to do that, one needs to again get some basis in the Hilbert space. I'm not uh, writing down. Hilbert space, I just need to fix the basis and take a basis of an element of uh, Grassmannian. The homogeneous coordinates are defined like, like for normal Grassmannian in a finite dimensional geometry. Uh, write down the matrix of uh, the basis of a Grassmannian with respect to the other basis of the whole space, and you divide one by the other in the coordinate. Uh, so, using these coordinates, an element Grassmannian can be represented as an element of uh, skew-symmetric unitary operator from U1 and restricted uh, algebra of this form. But uh, our equations conserve the first and the last term, so it follows that they have to concern Z star Z. Uh, and in consequence, when I, if one looks at this very equation, you can see that this part of the uh, integrable systems would be linear because, uh, for, uh, for example, since this part would be constant, so this we have only z here, and due to the nature of the fact that the z is an operator from h minus h from to h plus, one cannot write in any way an expression that would be not linear in Z, but right sometimes Z that cross Z, but it's already constant. So every expression you write down is uh, Z or Z cross times something that is constant. So this coordinates really linearize those uh, equations. So now to uh, conclude to the, what I wanted to say, I, I wanted to uh, show that those finite dimensional cases, because they are in some sense uh, the easiest to see what happens uh, there, and they also have some applications in quantum optics, uh, which I'll briefly say a few words about. So, for example, if we take uh, the two plus two dimensional case, and the original Hilbert space is four dimensional, and choose a polarization in two plus two the dimensions. The two by two matrix is there. We can write down the equations. So, for one of the sample equations of this whole hierarchy, looks like that A and D are constant, uh, self adjoint uh, matrices, and Z and Z star. I should write only one of those equations. Wrong both of them. Uh, the equation is something like that. So, there are Linear terms plus some non nonlinearity. Uh, so, by choosing proper uh, coordinates, we can see that the Hamiltonian in this case was uh, an expression like this when A, B, C, D, and so on are uh, matrix elements of those matrices. Uh, 
Um, and the equation written down uh, what in, into the coordinates are of this form, which is not, not very uh, interesting. We have some integrals of motion, so we can solve them explicitly. And, uh, not writing down the formulas, but also uh, uh, some expressions for, for the solutions. But, uh, I'm not going to give you effort to the formulas, but the main thing is that, that we have uh, some polynomial of the fourth degree, which was written before, and the equation is done solved by LG integral. Okay, this was this was uh, so this, these were equations for the modules of these coefficients to obtain the equation on phases. One gets much easier to solve and it's possible to write down solutions for, for uh, low values of this parameter k. So now for the physical interpretation of the Hamiltonian like that, uh, I'm going to speak about quantum optical states. In the, you have several phases of light which are interacting with the nonlinear system in some way, and there are terms of the various kind here in the Hamiltonian. Not all of them fit in my presentation, but it doesn't matter. It's, it's important to have a several kind of terms. This first type of Hamiltonian is just the free energy of the electromagnetic radiation, and uh, so energy of the waves with a fixed frequency, which is those two efficiency. So it's the, the easiest part. The other part is what physicists would call a curve or curve like effect. It's a big generalization of it. Can affect so these are non linear uh, terms like that, which means that the dependence of the amplitude uh, is not only on uh, a popularization of that amplitude, is, there is some cross relation between uh, the different modes of light, different colors of frequencies of light. And the last family of terms uh, describes the conversion of photons. Uh, Again, in the form that two photons are uh, consumed and two photons of different kind are produced at the same time. So that's what the physicists would call a two photon con conver conversion. Sometimes we get also some parameters there. So it's the thing that would be called a parametric conversion. Uh, those type of polynomials of Hamiltonians are also considered. Many of those can be solved by orthogonal polynomials, things like uh, that. Okay, so uh, there is one extra case, but I, um, I, don't, I don't know if I want to spend that lot of time here. You can consider one of those initial spaces to be one dimensional, the easiest possible case, and keep the other one infinite dimensional, write down what happens there. So we get uh, again the Hamiltonians uh, can be expressed as traces of some operators, uh, but there are not so many independent functions in that case, because since we have a very trivial example in one case, so many of them will coincide. Uh, so we have some, we can write down some operator uh, given by the finite expression like that, and an equation become in this situation Linear because it's uh, the simplest uh, situation you can solve it just by an exponentiation and uh, write down the solution explicitly. Okay, so this is the part I wanted to present. So to uh, to rate the rate what the situation was, we took the restricted Grassmannian, uh, then analyzed the space and symmetric group of this Grassmannian and of the algebra of this. Space because introduced a family of uh, Poisson brackets which gave us uh, a of integrals of motion evolution and the system of uh, hierarchy of equations is obtained, uh, gave us several some kind of equation that we can study in details. Okay, so maybe I'll finish with that and we finish it early. I just want to say that probably in the future I would have to organize a counterpart of this conference in the Wistop or somewhere around so uh, look out for announcements for 
second part in some sense of maybe another conference related to, to the subject. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Thomas, for the nice talk. And so, any online questions, Joao? Um, I don't see one right now. I don't know if uh, Ping was satisfied with all the answer from before, or if you want to discuss further. Well, I, I, I think my question probably is just too general. I just normally just for a past space. I, I just wonder, like. Uh, all the so it, I assume it's a standard or what because I I don't I'm not familiar with the subject like a when you talk a tangent bundle of a past space is still it's a banana bana manifold still banana manifold and you can also have a TPM switch around with P, uh, T equal to uh, PTM all this is still true. I don't know enough about past space. Uh, giving a past space PM. And I take a tangent bundle. Is that the same thing as a PTM, past space of a tangent bundle? Or does it in the category of a uh, banana manifold? Is, is this, are those still true? I don't know. I don't know much about past spaces to, to answer that. Okay. All right. Thank you. No. Um, question from Vienna? Yes, I see one. So the, are there other spaces where the, the complex structure of the functions on the circle that have polymorphic suggestions? Are there other equations besides KDB where that's um, a useful uh, tool? Yes, that's for example the basis of the deputy operator theory. Actually, analysis. Uh, and Gabriel was telling us something about it recently. It's just one of the fundamental examples of Hubert spaces that one can use. Uh, since you mentioned it, I think it may be also interesting to see the, the, the differential equation I wrote at the end. How do we look at the realization that maybe we get some PDEs, uh, which would be interesting or maybe known from some other. Uh, other. Further comments? Draw anything online? I don't believe so, not now. Okay, so let's thank Thomas again. And maybe before we leave, I think we all agree this was quite a nice conference and it was also, I think, a successful experiment, like a look at the uncharted lands. And I think people online interacted a lot, so it was quite successful and we here have been very happy to interact without the need of a screen. So this was possible thanks to Francesco, Barbara, and Stefan support, of course. So let's clap one more for their hard work. That being said, I think we can call it a week. Okay. <laughs>